Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a great day today. Today I want to take a look at kind of the third in a series of books that I've been looking at. Um, started with Brian Aldiss's Hot House and then kind of led to uh, the, the, the second part of a series um, and, uh, and kind of the sequel uh, set in a post-apocalyptic world called The Unforsaken Journey by uh, Sterling Lanier. Now I want to take a look at kind of a third uh, of this sort of theme. And the one I'm going to be doing today is probably the most famous of the third among, among traditional fantasy writers. The first one was, was written as a science fiction story. That's Hot House by Brian Aldiss. It won a Hugo and so forth. It's written as a science fiction, post-apocalyptic world. Plants take over the world, um, and humans are just fighting to survive, and it's a losing battle. Um, and then you last week I talked about Sterling Lanier's uh, world where he is being kind of uh, post-apocalyptic events have occurred, nuclear uh, bombs and such have, have wiped clean the world, and ever since then the fallout and such has mutated people, you have psychic powers, uh, you're fighting bad guys and so on and so forth, and it's with swords, I mean it's, it's your rangers, clerics, I mean it's it's a proto Dungeons and Dragons, it was before Dungeons and Dragons, but it's proto, it's got druids, clerics, uh, rangers, uh, <laughs> Um, our main character is a ranger um, for the church and also a psionicist. Um, so he's a, both. both. Um, so he's kind of an interesting character. He's basically a psychic ranger. Um, cleric. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's our, our so that's, and that's a lot of fun. That's definitely, uh, uh, and so, I, so I'll link you to those two below. Um, and then this one's going to be a third of the kind of that trilogy that I was envisioning when I came to it. Today what I'm going to take a look at is Fred Saberhagen. Um, Fred Saberhagen um, wrote uh, a number of stories and we're going to start the, his series that's set in his future world, uh, which I will call the World of Ardna for lack of another really, really good solid name. But Fred Saberhagen's uh, work, The Broken Lands, published in 1968. Um, now, this is the first of a trilogy that's that's uh, under the Empire of the East. Um, today, if you're going to go and pick it up, you're probably not going to pick up the novels. The novels are actually pretty pretty short. Like you're probably going to pick up a, more of a book like this. Uh, this is this is one of his collections of the Empire of the East trilogy uh, with all three of the books in it. It's not that thick um, for all three books. It won't take you that long to read. Um, and while they were published. Um, relatively close together actually during the 60s and 70s um, they are not very big like and this was not true this was true for a lot of the books back then uh, they're not big thick tomes that take you like hours and hours and hours and hours and hours to read <laughs> you know I've talked about this in many of my previous writers and stuff they're just not that big they're just not that stuff that's happening out there so, so you'll be able to read all three of them actual books pretty pretty uh, quickly um, and, and easily. So we're going to be taking a look at the first one, The Broken Lands, today. Before I get that, let's talk a little, little about Fred Saberhagen. Um, I started reading Fred Saberhagen when I was in seventh grade, and I read this book when I was in seventh grade, and this book is The Complete Book of Swords. Um, and I didn't, I was, I loved fantasy at the time, and I didn't even realize at the time that the, the book that we're going to be taking a look at today um, was set in the same world as this, uh, or other ones too. I didn't know who Fred Saberhagen was. This was just literally my school library and they gave it to me when I asked for it because nobody else had ever checked it out and read it. Um, this was back in Boone County, West Virginia. <laughs> Clean book of sorts there. Um, so again, uh, I had this. This was, this was this giant tome of three books was my first experience. And in it, I would actually consider this one of my uh, strong influences uh, because it's just so much fun um, and to, in it the gods creates a set of 12 swords which have been sort of scattered among the world as kind of this play things and in order to, to alleviate the boredom of the gods um, and so forth and over the course of the three books these swords are going to be found they're going to be used by different people they're going to create conflicts on the world and the gods themselves and so on and so forth and so that's that's the story <laughs> in a nutshell uh, and it's a lot of fun it's not something I would consider a, a great classic of fantasy, although I have probably read it five more times than probably most of the fantasy stuff on here, because I go back to it again and again and again. Um, and Saber Hagen's a strong writer. He pulls you in and he keeps you, um, and such. So I, I get it. Um, but I didn't realize that that was actually kind of a sequel in, t in the same world as the Empire of the East stuff, and I never actually looked for anything else. I, I had gone forward in the series, because there's actually a number of others. Uh, after the three things were over, there's all these lost swords, uh, stories where you're going to go and follow, uh, you know, wayfinders um, or, or wound healers' story and such. So, uh, and so you're going to or, or fire slayers. And so you're going to get all these different stories that you're going to go out there. Um, if the sword wasn't destroyed in the first set uh, books, then you're going to have. There's probably going to be a novel out there that's going to follow it um, along, and the people who who try to chase it and what they're doing with the world and so forth. Uh, 
but it's fun um, and it's a fun world. But again, I never realized that this stuff was actually in the same world as Empire of the East until I read Empire of the East. In fact, I didn't even know it when I picked it up. I was just like, hey, I like this Fred Saberhagen guy. Let me go check him out. And this is like five years ago. Um, let me go check him out and see what I think. Um, I was looking up Gary Gax's Appendix N, which lists Empire of the East um, and so forth. Uh, and so I said, hey, I was, I was inspired. So I figured I'd go check it out. Um, and this is much more... Um, the first, the first book, um, especially, and the third book, especially, I would say too, um, in this series is especially post-apocalyptic fantasy, as opposed to just hard fantasy. The rest of the stuff, it's set after this by by enough time uh, that the the world has kind of simmered down uh, from the wars. This is set about fifty thousand years um, in the future. The Broken Lands, uh, the first and such, about fifty thousand years in the future from now, um, after major wars had happened, and you won't find out too much until later on in like novels two and three. So I don't want to give too much away because they are going to be key parts of the story, especially book three. And so I do not want to give away too much now because, if, but I want to draw you in. So um, let's, let's just say that there were some massive uh, um, nuclear explosions that were happening um, and there were these uh, sort of um, super intelligences that were, hope, that were trying to keep mankind alive. Um, and unfortunately, Things didn't work out for various physics-based reasons, and now the world has been permanently altered. Um, it's been thrown back in time in terms of its, in, uh, not literally, but in terms of what, what's now happening and so forth. It's been knocked back to the Middle Ages. Magic is now existing. You've got demons, creatures, all these sorts of things that are now in the world. Um, that now people are fighting against. But you also have these relics uh, from the old time too. And that's gonna be the key for the first book in The Broken Lands. You're gonna be following a character along um, and you're gonna be getting a chance to kind of get a, a feel for the, for the land. There's these two major sort of powers uh, from the East and the West. And this is written during the height of the Cold War. It's gonna be very obvious. <laughs> Post-apocalyptic world, a little kind of the Cold War, East and West are the names of the locals. Um, you're gonna be looking at the local West group as they fight against the Empire of the East, um, which is why it's called the Empire of the East, um, and so forth. Um, you're gonna find out who some of these players are, uh, players like Orcus and stuff, you're gonna be finding out and so forth. But our main character is kind of this just local kid who's just kind of put in the wrong situation and so forth. Um, there's gonna be a tank in the first story. It's not called a uh, tank. <laughs> they call it an elephant um, and so forth. But there's all these kind of old style of uh, things that had survived. And again, this was common for the time. Um, um, Saberhagen, uh, in a lot of either pre-Tolkienian work or post-Tolkienian work, um, a lot of writers like Jack Vance, uh, Clark Ashton Smith, um, and so forth, would set their works in the future after uh, sort of si with 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 science fiction as a part of it. This is also something that was happening contemporaneously with things like the Dragon Riders of Pern series by Anne McCaffrey, where you're going back and trying to kind of refine flamethrowers and stuff in order to fight a thread that's falling from the sky on this colony planet. Uh, but you're riding dragons and they're breathing fire and so forth. I mean, it feels fantasy, and, and it is because it's a low tech colony world, but it's still a low tech colony world. That of, of, of us. I mean, it's not like... So it's still kind of a science fiction fantasy. It feels fantasy with all the trappings and fantasy, but it's a science fiction story. Um, so you have a lot of those sorts of things out there uh, that are that are kind of, you know, crossing the streams. Uh, you know, it, it would be a long time before... Uh, um, Fiction um, and our expectations going in had advanced to the point where we won't like it anymore if a fantasy story is actually science fiction or vice versa. <laughs> we don't like that anymore. <laughs> uh, unless it's a part of the initial concept of the world. And in this case, it actually is. Because 50,000 years in the future, it's post-apocalyptic, there's a tanks uh, in, in, in the first thing. And when you get across the tank, it's going to have a major impact on a battlefield and what's happening and so forth. And this is gonna continue throughout the series um, and the other two books that are in it. And you're gonna find out more and more and more as you read more of these books about what the world happened, who are the major powers, why they came about. Um, and there's gonna be some amazing things that are gonna happen in the third book. And in fact, the third book is the only book in the series that's actually listed on Gary Gygax's Appendix N. If you were to go back and take a look at Appendix N, you're only going to see the third book, This Changeling Earth. You're not gonna see the first two books there, which is very interesting because you really kind of need to read those books to get out and get caught up and such. Um, but you will see a lot of this influence from local things like a major player of Orcus um, and as an evil demon, um, who's a demon uh, in 
the first edition of Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> and in the first monster manuals, all the way up to, uh, and, and there's even like magical items like the Wand of Orcus and the first Eldritch Wizardry um, supplements in the mid 70s, all the way up through modern stuff. Um, and these kind of concepts, these big giant world sweeping events that are happening and such. So there's a lot of things that happen here um, in the Broken Lands um, and so forth. And it's a good way to kind of get into a Fred Saberhagen world. Now, Saberhagen himself was a big writer. He wrote a lot of stuff. Um, he's probably today probably more well known for some of his science fiction stuff that was on, on the, from this Berserker series. Um, he also wrote a lot of stuff um, in the horror genre too, with things like Dracula um, and such. So if you're interested, you may have heard of him in horror if you if you love horror. You may have heard of him in science fiction if you like science fiction, or you may have heard of him in fantasy if you love fantasy, um, or if you're like me, you love those are all three of your favorite genres. And then Fred Saberhagen's a name you're definitely going to know because he keeps coming back to all these three separate genres and so forth. Um, he's won awards and so forth and runs just a ton and ton and ton of works. He was actually um, a writer for the Encyclopedia Britannica before he started writing um, uh, for us. So he worked for Encyclopedia and put together articles and stuff for them and did research for him. So he has this sort of intellectual, irid I don't know if this is a word, but this intellectual irid erudition that he brings uh, when he writes. Um, and he is constantly bringing out these words, these concepts, and so forth. And he comes to it from this sort of intellectual, analytical side um, when he's writing his things. And you'll see that, too, uh, when you go back and read anything that he's written, whether it's a Berserker series, Dracula series, uh, The Empire of the East, or whatever. Um, so uh, if you have not heard about Fred Saberhagen, this is him. Check him out. Uh, the, Bro the Broken Lands is not a bad place to start, particularly if you like fantasy. Um, this is that, that would be where I would say, hey, why don't you start it out? Actually, I'd say, hey, what about some Berserker stuff instead uh, or something else on the science fiction side of things if you wanted to start out with Saberhagen on the sci-fi side of life. But this is not bad. The Broken Lands is not a bad place. Um, it's going to get... The series is going to get, the Changeling Earth is going to be ma massively great with some great things that are happening and so forth. Um, but check it out. See if you like it. Now, if you've read The Broken Lands or the rest of the series, let me know what you think of it in the comments below, whether or not you agreed or disagreed with my overall evaluation of it in this video. Um, and also, um, have you read some of the Saber Vegan stuff? What did you think? Um, and so forth. Uh, if you've read this video, or read this video, if you've watched this video, or read it, maybe you read it in the comments below. Um, but if you've watched this video, hey, I want to take some time out of your day. I, I really appreciate it because we all, all have busy days, all have busy lives um, and such. So the fact that you took some time out of it to spend with me, I really do appreciate that. That's very humbling, so thank you. Also, finally, um, if you like this video, um, there's no reason not to hit that subscribe button because there's going to be so many more reviews to follow. Um, I do classics of science fiction, fantasy, and horror. Um, so, and I try to unpack some uh, great classics for you, and, such as Broken Lands of the Empire of the East series from 1968. Um, so you folks have a great day. Thank you so much for your time.